Oh man, what is shaking? I'm feeling it today. I'm feeling the vibe. I'm pounding the table. This offensive line class is fire. It's lit. It makes me want to just want to wrestle something, tear something to pieces. Give me something. Give me the. Oh, man, I, don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to fall here in a second. I am falling a little bit. He's man down, man. All the bad. We're still alive. We're still thriving. Let's keep it going. What's cooling, should I say? Oh, man, we got offensive linemen today, and I think this class is really good. I think it's shaking up to be pretty good. I mean, it's still early, of course, summer scouting. With that being said, I think there's some seriously good offensive linemen in this class that, I mean, this is this is arguably as good of a class as, what, the 2021 class with Sewell and Slater. To me, there's two top guys, and there could be a third or fourth easily in this class. Let's go through it. We're going to also go through the interior offensive linemen, so strap up. It's going to be a long one, I'm sure. So... Starting at number one, Joe Olt, Notre Dame tackle. And I'm going to keep it brief and whatnot. We're not going to oh, gonna bore you too much with the sketch. If you want to take a look at my notes here and, and let me know your thoughts and opinions, if you differ, all those things. I'm not a perfect scout. Just do what I can and try to watch as much. Here are my games that I watch. I put all the games that I, I watch for each prospect down there. And like I said, we can let you know. I'll just kind of go through very, very snip picks. I don't, I don't want to bore you too much. I'm probably looking to going to sleep right now, looking at these scouting reports and notes and all. I can't get too tripped up with that. Simply put, Joe Walt, what does he do well? To me, I think his greatest strength, first off, is for his 36-inch arms. Are, I mean, <laughs> he's got insane length. It's just wild. But, you know, he's six foot seven. He's a taller guy. But he's so balanced at his size. He's so under control. He's so technically refined. He's just a, a mechanic. I don't know any other words to display it. But that's really what Joe Alt, in a nutshell, he's so smooth. Now, I, I don't think he's the most crazy domineering athlete or anything like that. He's not going to blow you away, you know, with his athletic traits. And I do think there's still some things he needs to improve upon. Um, and can he work on some core strength? Absolutely. Overall, though, Joe Alt, really, really good prospect. He's a top five pick. He's a guy that is right there after like Marvin Harrison Jr. in terms of pure top talents in this draft, Caleb Williams, you know, and whatnot. So, yeah, he is a top five pick in my eyes. Number two, Olu Fashan who? And who? Yeah, Fashan who is really good too. He's a guy where it's like this guy has the traits to be a top, top tier tackle. He's not there yet, okay? He's not technically refined guy. He still has more work to do. He's not Joe Olt in that refinement, but he has a higher ceiling, in my view, than Joe Olt because of the insane athletic traits. I mean, this guy moves. <laughs> it, it's it, I, I, You watch this guy, and you watch another dude's like, this guy moves like a you know a running back. I mean, uh, not a guy like that, but he is a really, really good athlete. I just love his mirroring skills and his body, you know, size, profile, all checks the mark as well. So, Fashanu can reach the, if you're, Especially for me, he's in that 6 to 12 range. I don't have him quite as a top five prospect yet. He can definitely get there with another season. And I'm, I don't mind him coming back. He's still a young player. He could have come into this draft. And I still think he would have been a top 12 pick very easily. He may have been the first tackle off the board. May have gone to Arizona. Nonetheless, really, really think Fashanu with some improvements, especially in the run game and stuff like that. Uh, will be a top prospect in this class. But for me at the moment, I put him in that 6 to 12 range. Uh, outside of Brock Bowers, that's when I'd start to, you know, that top five prospect list. Number three, J.C. Latham. Uh, sounds like Gotham. He'd be a perfect fit for, I don't know, wherever Gotham is. I guess you could find a place like that on the map. But Latham is a guy where it's like, he's got insane strength. And and some might even view this guy as a guard. I think there's going to be some teams that, you know, say, hey, this guy could definitely, you know, we put him at guard. We'll see what his length ends up being I think it was an I think it's enough to be a right tackle I'm not super worried about that I like him as a right tackle I think he fits that profile really to a T so yeah I mean yes the Alabama thing and this is one thing I will say I think people are knocking him a little bit because oh, I hate to say it he's from Alabama and it's like you look at the offensive linemen that have come out of Alabama over the years sometimes that happens like with Ohio State quarterbacks and etc sometimes you scout the helmet I think Latham's a really good prospect. He's got some issues. There's no doubt about it. Penalties is definitely one of those issues. And I think he does get a little top heavy. So there's he, he needs some technical refinement to his game. But I think the profile is there to be a really, really good offensive lineman. He's got a huge hop step too. It's insane how quickly he gets out. Um, he's not, I don't think the most athletic guy overall, but, uh, you know, in terms of like he can get through his slide really, really well. Now, I do think he needs to improve his, his 
lateral agility, like his overall quickness, you know, with his, his steps. Because, like, once he hits those first big steps, he kind of slows down the feet. And that's something I noticed. Nonetheless, to me, he's in that mid-first round, mid-to-late first round conversation uh, in that range. And then, like I said, if nothing else, I think he's a guard. But I, I really do like Latham. I think he's a good prospect. I think he's one of the better Alabama prospects to come out so far that we've seen. Uh, now, number four, Amarius Mims. This guy is another one of those dudes that if he reaches his his ceiling, he could be better than all these guys. I mean, he has the, one of the highest ceilings in this draft class. The tools are insane. He's really, really good athlete. I mean, that's kind of what he is. He's got insane athletic traits, insane strength. The profile, I think the, the wingspans, all I mean, it's all there. Amarius Mims could be a top five tackle in the NFL. It's a development thing right now. He is so technically raw. I mean, he is literally like rostling people out there like I was in my chair. Barry, I, I was using a very bad technical refinement when I was trying to rostle my chair. I wasn't setting a very good example. But that's kind of Amarius Mims for you. He's just very, very technically raw. Needs a lot of improvements to kind of etch out some of those things. But a really, a guy that... You're talking about, you know, could be a top five pick in this draft, could go ahead of Joe Alt, Olu Fashanu when it's all said and done, if he comes out this year and looks like a technical beast with those traits. Number five, Blake Fisher. This guy's kind of floor guy. I, I don't think he's got insane, you know, overall athlete. I mean, I did see him on the gym on that, you know, in the treadmill doing like 21, 22 miles an hour. So he's not, you know, he's not a bad athlete. But I think on film, he, you know, his, his athleticism lacks kind of like that dynamicism that you see from some of these other prospects. Overall, what he does well, he's another one of those guys that really, I think he's pretty technically refined. I mean, maybe some consistencies with the hands. But overall, like when he latches, he's got great grip strength. And I think his balance and body control is also excellent. They teach him well there at Notre Dame. And this dude is a really, really solid guy. And I think in that second round range, you're getting yourself a nice starting right tackle. Maybe not high end upside guy, but I think he's a nice starter for you. On to number six, Jack Nelson from Wisconsin. This is another one of those guys that he's got a really high ceiling as well. Like you're talking about, I, I legit think there could be four to six offensive tackles that go in the first round. I'm telling you, this is, I think it's a good one. I think it's a really good class. And Jack Nelson is, right now, I think he's a third rounder. He's very technically raw. I mean, this guy has got some work, just like Amarius Mims does, but I don't think he has the like super high traits that Amarius Mims has, but he's got good traits within his own right. This guy's a really athletic offensive lineman. I think his length profile is, is definitely up there. He, he, uh, he's, he's kind of an interesting player too. Like the way he moves, he's really low and he, he's got these quick feet. I don't, <laughs> it's got a, I don't know, but it's hard to explain. You just got to go watch him. It's really, he's got this old school mentality vibes to him. Like I said, technically very unrefined. He's got a lot of work. Balance is one of his biggest issues. He ends up on the ground quite a bit, but, uh, needs to get more under control this year. And maybe Wisconsin, it, their offensive line was just all over the place. And I think with hopefully, you know, more stability and coaching and stuff like that, they should be better of an offensive unit this year. Braylon Allen might, you know, be a good uh, beneficiary of that too. But nonetheless, Jack Nelson to me could easily be a late first rounder, but I have him more in that day two conversation at the moment. Number seven, Kingsley Suamatea from BYU. This guy is a, he's another tools guy for sure. Now I wasn't as impressed. I know he's been, hyped up in that first round right now and I see why I mean he's got insane tools as well a really good athletic mover for a guy that's six foot six 330 pounds he might have been playing more than that he is a he's a king out there he's a he's a monster and he's got insane length as well he fits all those traits I see him as a developmental tackle though because to me just so uncomfortable going up against good edge rushers especially I mean, you talk about any of those Oregon guys. It was a DJ Johnson. I saw him going against Isaiah Foskey. And, you know, it just overall, whenever I was looking at his tape, he just was not comfortable. If he did not have chip help, in a lot of games, they had to put chip help over there or he was getting beat. It, it, he's just, like I said, there's going to be some process there and there's a projection with this one. But to me, I see him as a developmental guard at the moment. I would rather... Maybe like Tyler Smith, maybe put him at guard early on in his career, and then maybe long term you put him in as a tackle. But let's move on to number eight, Roger Rosengarden. Let's get the garden going over Washington. This guy's man, he's good. He's really good offensive lineman as well. I, he wasn't like blown away with the traits or nothing. I think he needs to get a little stronger, especially in the lower body, the lower half. Get some more core strength going on there, but. 
a guy who I think could definitely stick as a starting right tackle in the NFL for a long time. I see him as a developmental starter and right tackle. I Again, the movement skills, it's all there. Like He has good enough length to be a nice starting right tackle. Uh, his hand placement's good. So like he just kind of checks off the boxes. There's some small things I think he needs to improve upon. But overall, the biggest thing for me is just continue to build out your lower half, your core strength and anchor strength. And I think this guy could be a nice starter in the NFL. I see him as a one-year kind of developmental project. Year number two as a starter. Uh, Telesi Fulaga from Oregon State. This guy's a monster. I think he was phew, six foot six, 326 pounds, but he... I think he was bigger than that this past season for Oregon State. He, he was jacked. I mean, this guy's an absolute behemoth out there. You can tell who – he's an easy scout because, like, I don't even have to look at the – I mean, you obviously, you, with the offensive linemen, they stay in the same positions typically. But um, not always the case. It isn't always the case. There are some guys that go from position to position, which is just wild. Nonetheless, Telesi Fulaga, a guy where – he hits all those profiles, the size, the strength. It's all there. And he's actually got some decent movement skills for his size. It's actually pretty impressive. He's just not the most flexible guy. And I, I don't see him as this like super high upside because I do think he's going to have some limitations and certain schemes are just not going to take him. So that's why he see him as more of a, I mean, maybe he could creep into round two. I do think his film is good. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if he goes somewhere in that, you know, late, round two early round three conversation because he is a again if his tape looks as good as it was this year I could very much see him going in that late two range but again I just think there are some limitations with the flexibility more speed it's going to be a problem for him at the next level on to number 10 Javon Foster of Missouri this dude's like it's 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 tough man he just doesn't have the foot quickness that's really my issue with Javon Foster but technically wise this guy's really good I think he's really solid Overall, like hand strength, grip strength, uh, you know, knows his limitations. You know, he's got the length profile. Like he's really good at, uh, you know, being able to use his angles in the run game. Like all those things, they're there with Javon Foster. It just, again, the lack of foot quickness. He's going to really struggle in my eyes against Brian Burns. I know a lot of people struggle against Brian Burns. You know, that's a, maybe a bad example. But you know what I'm saying? Like I think just NFL quickness is going to give him too many fits to be a top tier starter. I do think he can be a solid star. I think he can be like in the Carter Warren. That's why I have him more in that fourth round range. I think that's a very fair kind of, you know, spot for him. Maybe he can sneak up into a round three conversation because his tape is good. I, I will say his tape is really solid. I mean, he went up against some really good edge rushers there and, you know, Auburn, Kansas State, and Georgia. But again, it did show, especially, you know, for some of those more fast, you know, faster guys, some of those faster, twitchier guys. It's going to give him problems at the next level. Now, number 11, Robert Scott, another guy where it just he didn't have the lateral agility. I just don't think, you know, I see him as a nice backup tackle and someone that could start in a pinch, but more of a swing tackle. Again, he's got he's got a lot of technical refinements, too. You know, he's not a bad tackle by any means. I, he, to me, he just didn't have the tape that Robert Foster has, and he has kind of the athletic limitations uh, that also Robert or Javon Foster has, pardon me, but Rob, I'm mixing the two names up, but they're kind of, you know, in, in the veins, but I do love those goggles, man. Oh man, those are sick. So yeah, and Florida State, they're going to be good. So come on, you gotta, we got to watch out, you know, it's going to be a fun, fun season for Florida State. Who I, could, I think it could be a national championship sort of season. Just watch out, Jordan Travis. Got some good receivers too, Trey Benson, don't forget about him. But anyway, last tackle on this list, Wyatt Millam from West Virginia. Take me home, country roads. And uh, I'm sure, how I imagine, if you're from West Virginia, you're probably so tired of hearing that song. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, this guy, to me, he's got a lot of developmental tools. And I could see him working himself into a backup role down the line. But, to me, just so, so raw and gets beat way too much out there. Um, yeah, it was really this. I mean, I only was able to watch two games. So, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. But, both games, it just very much uncomfortable on an island maybe put him in guard early on but i could see him developing he definitely has the traits and the tools i think he's got enough length to be a developmental guy but i see him as a guard tackle somewhere in that mold but as a, as a very much a developmental you know fifth round on maybe even the udfa okay let's swing on over interior offensive line which also i will say this right now if you're wondering oh where's a guy like graham barton he'll be on this list i i mean i think he can possibly swing over a tackle but i like him more as an interior guy at the next level but we'll talk about that in a bit when the time comes donovan jackson ohio state well he fits all the tool i mean this guy is so athletic at his size six foot four 320 pounds great length profile i mean it's just 
all the tools are there. And that's why, to me, yes, there's a bit of projection. His tape is not first round in my eyes. But the projection with this guy, he is a great run blocker right now. Like He's a really good run blocker. There's no doubt. Like He's a, got first-round run blocking tape. His movement skills, like he's got fast. He's got those nimble feet. And we talk about that size profile. It's just he's a really solid prospect. I mean, there's really no I, – I just don't see this guy without a bad work ethic busting at the next level. You know what I mean? Like I think he's just going to be a really good offensive lineman. If he can continue to get with good coaching and whatnot, especially at the next level – I don't see how this guy is not a top 25 guard in the NFL. Now, again, you got to say to yourself, well, do we spend a first-round pick? But I think if you're at the back end of the first round and you want a good offensive lineman with a high floor, I think Donovan Jackson's your guy. So, number two, Tate Ratledge. And this guy was also really impressed with. Now, he made it, he doesn't have quite the tools that Donovan Jackson has, and that's why I have Donovan Jackson at number one. But to me, Radledge is so technically refined, man. He is so good as a pass protector. He's not the run blocker. He doesn't have like the, the, that, quite that leverage that Donovan Jackson has and that overall manpower. Maybe he can develop that a little bit more. But to me, he could be like a, I don't know, like a Joel Pantonio type. I think that's an upside comp, of course. But I just look at him in pass pro and I'm like, this guy's an NFL player right now. I think he could be a starter, an immediate impact starter for an NFL team currently as a top 20 offensive guard in the nfl really like his game and i think he's he's worth that late first rounder i just think you know again you gotta prioritize an offensive line he's really gonna be a nice guy for you there at the end of the first round probably made more of a day two guy you know when it comes down to it but to me he's a first round sort of prospect cooper b uh round number two now i know he's you know like a lot number one guards you know currently being projected and i don't disagree Cooper Beebe's really good. His tape is really, really good. I just uh, look at the traits, and I do think that, you know, he doesn't quite have those athletic traits, especially, like said, Donovan Jackson. And I didn't think his tape was as polished as someone like Tate Ratledge. So I kind of had to put him right there, but he's still really good, too. I mean, he's, he's just an insane pass blocking. Is, he just doesn't lose many reps, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't really knock Cooper Beebe's game a whole ton other than he just doesn't have, like, those crazy high-end traits. He's not a bad mover by any means, but I just don't think he has those high-end traits where he could struggle against some quickness at the next level and whatnot. And I do think his length is not, you know, anything crazy. So when we get into the process of that, do you take a first-round pick on him? Those are all question marks I have. But very, very good starter in the NFL. I see him, if nothing else, being a 15-25 to 25 guard Number four is a center. It's Cedric Van Pran, Georgia. He's got a guy. Here's a guy who's very athletic, needs some more core strength. I don't think he has the uh, the strength profile just yet. But going back to school another year, hopefully hits those hits the you know the the deadlifts and the or the squats. I don't know. Get, he'll be. I'm sure he'll be squatting 500 pounds still at this moment. But anyway, it's not just the strength. I do think one of his big things is he gets real top heavy sometimes, and he'll just kind of whiff off the line. He he finds himself in a struggle quite a bit there. But to me, he's a day one starting center for you. Might have to take your lumps. We'll see how it goes this year with his film. And again, I'm glad he went back this year. He needed it. But I see him as a day one starter. I could see him going into the late first round. He definitely has the traits and the tools if he improves his technical refinement, which Georgia could have three offensive linemen going into the first round very easily in this class, which is just wild. But really, really good offensive linemen. And I think he is, you know, right now the top center. But yeah, there's some decent centers. We'll talk about some more in here in a bit. But Graham Barton at number five, he his tape is excellent. And you talk about a guy, he move, he collides, man. I he has some. I need to show some clips of this guy moving and just the way he he has some similarities, maybe like Cole Strange. And I think he may even be better of a prospect than Cole. I don't know. It's tough, but Graham Barton glides at the next level and he haunts he haunts for people he's got that finisher mentality i love how consistent he is at at locating and hitting people at the second level his run blocking and pulling ability is dangerous if you are like i mean if you like the chicago bears and you use um your tackle like braxton jones and they move him at the tackle position get him on the move so much like they did this past season if you're going to do that then absolutely i think you can put him a tackle but to me, I like him more as a guard, and I just think he's going to, especially for teams that pull their guards and do a lot of zone blocking and stuff like that, I think he's going to be so good at that. His mirroring skills and pass protection are also really good. The big thing with me, I, I do think he's got some inconsistencies in pass pro where his hands, he does get a little wide, right? A little bit of maybe Bernard Ryman in that sense and where he just kind of needs to work on his overall consistency with his hands. 
But anyway, man, he is going to be a fan favorite. I'm just telling you, his tape is really fun to watch. It's really good tape. So watch out for Graham Barton. Uh, number six, Christian Mahogany. What a name. Ooh, that's an offensive lineman name right there. Mahogany. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mahogany. <laughs> oh, man. But anyway, dude, this guy's really good. He's really good. It's too bad. If he didn't, was it the knee injury? If he didn't have the knee injury, this guy would have easily been you know, maybe the top guard in this past class, it just, you know, comes down to how does he look this year with coming off that knee injury. There's going to be some questions there, but his tape's really good. And uh, yeah, I could see him being easily a riser if he, if all those medicals check out because he's got really good strength. He's a great pass protector. He's got enough movement skills to get the job done and, and to be a phone booth guy, right? He's your phone booth guy. He's your Baltimore Raven. You know, when you think of a Baltimore Raven type of offense alignment, like Mahogany's kind of your type, you know what I mean? So it can be like that Brandon Brooks or, you know, kind of like that muscle man, man, there, you know, be your dude and, you know, your stuffer there. But, uh, you know, I do think, again, you've got to work on his balance a little bit. It can get a little top heavy. So overall, I think he's a starting right guard in the NFL. Maybe not, you know, top five type of guard, but I think he is going to be in that nice mid tier range where he's a really solid starter for you. Number seven, Brandon Coleman. He was their left tackle actually this season. Here's a guy where I don't see him as a tackle. I just don't think he has the foot quickness. He needs to move inside. I actually kind of like his tape a little bit more than Steve Avila personally. And then that's why I think he could easily go, especially again, Avila went top towards the top of the second. I think Brandon Coleman could easily be a top of the second guy. I, again, I like his tape a lot. I think he's really strong. He's really big wide you know your muscle man gonna gonna plow down dudes in that mold of christian mahogany these guys are your your gap power heavy dudes and your teams that are looking for that type of offense alignment and he's he's pretty technically refined too i thought he was way better at picking up stunts than steve avila was and get this done now i think steve avila is a good prospect and everything but i was really impressed with brandon coleman i i feel like he's you know, you know, the underrated guy in that offensive line, really, really solid left tackle for them. But I like to talk about, it. I think his foot quickness, it's not going to be a handle at the left tackle. Maybe try him at right tackle. I don't know. Certain schemes might be able to get away with it. But to me, especially with his top heaviness, I, I do like him better in that phone booth wrestler, right? So Brandon Coleman in that day two conversation as a guard for me. Uh, Bryce Foster. Here's a guy where it's it's a bit of a projection as well. Okay, Bryce Foster, I could see some Creed Humphrey to his game. I really, I see that to him. He's not there yet. He is nowhere near the technical refinement. He's, his tape is sloppy, right? It is sloppy. But I also felt like the PFF grades were unfair to him at, at times. Uh, I thought his tape was way better than, because I was watching, you know, I, I look up games and I try to go through the games where, he played okay, played some good, you know, one good game and one bad game, right? I try to go through all of them. And he only had four games that he played this past season. He ended up tearing his OCL, I think, or something like that. So, uh, yeah, it's some sort of knee injury. I think it was an ACL, but there'll be question marks with that, too. And that's why I think he's more in that later day two, maybe even in early day three. It's going to you know, be a question with that. That's one of those things. But very inconsistent, technically re refined guy right now. But you talk about a guy that has that brute strength. He's got that mentality you look for, all those things. And he could be a nice dude that you put in right there, especially in, again, a power scheme. Going to be a really, really solid interior guy and a center that can be a starter for a long time. Number nine, USC guard, Jonah Monheim. Uh, this is a guy where, really, again, another tech, pretty technically refined guy. I mean, he fits all those, you know, he's good with his mirroring skills. He's got a nice wide base, all those things, right? Um... And he's, he's pretty, you know, smooth athlete. I wouldn't call him an elite athlete, but I think he's a smooth athlete, can get the job done. I think he's very scheme versatile, too. Big thing with him that I think he needs to improve upon is uh, he gets beat inside quite a bit. And and maybe it's, you know, he's trying to make up for the length and things like that, but I, I feel like he stops his feet quite a bit, especially on contact. Like, again, he's got good movement until, again, kind of that contact hit. So just some maybe some technical refinement right there. And again, he's, I don't think he's like the super high end. I, I don't think he has the crazy length. He plays a tackle. I think he should move inside the guard, plays right tackle for them. I see him as more of a guard at the next level. Maybe again, for certain schemes, maybe try him a tackle, you know, if he fails over there. But I see him as maybe like an Elijah Vera Tucker. You move him inside the guard. And I think he could be a nice swing man out there if, if you need to, if you end up like a Jets this season or an Ambassador <laughs> in that sort of situation. But for me, Nice, solid player and, you know, build a lot more core strength. And that way, maybe you don't, uh, you know, have to worry so much about your anchor and getting beat there. You know. uh, number 10, Gus Hartwick, Purdue Boilermakers. I was so stoked. I'm like, please be good. Please be good. Purdue, come on. We need something this year. This guy's good. 
really good pass protector. I was so impressed with his hands, the way he utilizes his hands and his mirroring skills. Excellent pass protector. Now, his run blocking, mm, really bad. I mean, I will say he's got some of the worst run blocking tape that I watched out of all the centers, maybe even some of the guards, too. He needs to improve his angles, needs to improve his leverage, all those things he's got to work on in the run game. But in terms of pass protection, he's good. And he does have some explosiveness. I, I was impressed with his movement skills. Like, he can get out. He just doesn't always connect. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, he needs to add some core strength. He needs to add some run game refinement for sure. Get better in his run blocking. But for right now, really good pass protecting guard or a center. Maybe guard, but I, I see him as more of a center personally. Um, anyway, round three, maybe round four. Uh, Purdue, you know, Indiana, oh, Hoosier, Purdue, action there. You know what I'm saying? Got to include that bias. Maybe more of a round four guy. <laughs> Take that out of there. But uh, he's a good player. This guy's a good player too, Drake Nugent. He's just kind of... Look, he's another one of those guys. I think he's really technically fine. I think he could be a nice, like, Drew Dolman type of, you know, day one starter. He's going over to Michigan, too, uh, transferring over this season. I think he's a really solid prospect. I don't think he has the uh, elite traits, right? I don't think he has the power element. I think, he, you know, maybe the length is, I, I don't know. We'll have to see where he's at length-wise. Um, but overall, I see him as a guy who's kind of your, uh, you know, can hit your zone blocks. I don't think he's really your second-level guy, but I think he's your zone block under control, solid player there as a center, solid starter. Can you know, especially on a cheap four-year contract, he's a nice starting uh, center potential, right? In that kind of ten to ten to twenty mold of a center in that range, in my view. At least I think there's the potential there. But you know, again, I think he's definitely can be a solid starter in the NFL and in that fourth round range. That's kind of where I feel comfortable with Drake Nugent. Moving on here, to number eleven, and we got Ladarius Henderson also transferring to Michigan. And it's kind of where we get into a lot of the guards now. And these these are some guys where it's like. I definitely think there's some potential there. There's just still some question marks for sure, and, and we'll see how those things go. But Ladarius Henderson there at Arizona State, like he's got some good tape, man. I think he's got some good explosiveness. He's more of a linear athlete. I don't know. If, I think he's going to have to work on his footwork consistently. I, do, I did see him get beat inside a little bit too much for my liking, and he also needs to get a little stronger. But I love his hand, you know, his hand punch, and he uses his length pretty well. And he's a good. He's really good with his angles in the run game. I was really impressed. So he's going to fit Michigan to a T. They knew exactly what they were looking for when they got Ladarius Henderson. So, again, specific type of schemes are going to really, really like Ladarius Henderson and being able to use him as a polar, like in gap profiles. If he can build his strength, I think he could be a really, really good gap polar and whatnot. So uh, he's got, like I said, he's got some improve, things he needs to improve upon. Overall, in that developmental type of tier for me, not a day one starter, but in that developmental, could be a uh, starting left guard. On to number 12, Connor Colby from Iowa. And this is a guy where, you know, again, he's got all the traits. You know, he's got enough traits. I don't think he's like the craziest athlete or nothing like that. But he's got like that 10-yard quickness that you really need from offensive linemen. You don't have to run 40 yards down the field, you know what I mean? But... He's got enough athletic profile. He's got the strength profile. You can tell he's, he's worked hard to you know, build up some core strength. He's got plenty of core strength and whatnot. And I like his quick firing hands. I really think that's one of his strengths. For me, though, he needs to improve his overall technique. And you think Iowa, right, coming out with the technique and all those things, it's not there yet. He's still a young player, too. But he, he's so – and he played tackle uh, for like half of the season. They moved him inside the guard. looked way better. He is not a tackle. He looks so uncomfortable when I watched him in the, uh, what was it? I think the Michigan game is the one I watched him where he played tackle. I know there was one game that I watched because I was curious. Say, hey, can he play tackle? And some, you know, people are projecting him as a tackle. So I wanted to kind of, I was curious, right? I was curious, like, oh, can this guy play tackle? Nah, he's a guard, man. To me, he's a guard. Maybe if some technical refinement, but he really struggled with quickness. Looks so uncomfortable as a tackle. Maybe I watched the wrong game. I don't know. But to me, he's a guard. On to number 13. Zach Zinter here from Michigan, the Wolverine. Another Wolverine. So many Wolverines on this list. Woo. They got interior guys all being drafted potentially here. And again, they're all in that mid-tier range. Some of them are going to, you know, potentially get there and some may not. It's kind of the way it is. But Zinter, to me, solid offense alignment. I see him as a kind of, again, that mid-tier sort of starter. I just don't think he has, like, the flexibility to be a high-end starter. I think he really struggled with his recovery. But what he's so good at in Michigan, man, they teach us to what. Uh, and there's another reason probably why they wanted to get Ladarius Henderson and, and also Drew Dahlman too. But he uses his run block angles so good. I mean, you look at some of the runs out there that open for Blake Corum and also Donovan Edwards. This guy, they ran behind Zach Zinter. 
and also all over teamy too i mean let's give some credit where credit's due but those guys on that right side oh they open some wild lanes it just and you go watch any of the tape i mean especially ohio state tape where like donovan edwards he ran behind him like two huge runs were behind zach zinter and only with teamy so yeah they, they they know how to use their angles and zach zinter one of the best in the class that i saw uh, utilizing those angles uh number 14 Layden Robinson, I know he was a guy being projected as potentially even a first-round pick. His tape was real sloppy, and he's like, yo, I got to come back. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's like he doesn't have the athletic tools, right? He's, he's definitely your phone booth blocker, but the core strength, the power, he is your gap scheme guy. And I do think he does an effective job as a, as a, a puller. Like, he can hit guys, you know, in short spurts and all those things that you need to do. And I actually kind of came away, you know, with – with where you know he's being talked about so you know much and whatnot as he got hit so hard on his tape this year i kind of like you know what actually it wasn't as bad as i once thought it was you know what i mean like i did a rewatch because i watched a lot of the 21 games and i'm like eh, i was not impressed especially he was being hyped as a first rounder but going back and watching this year's tape i actually thought you know it's not terrible i mean it wasn't great don't get me wrong that Texas A&M, A&M offensive line in general, like I thought, should have been way better than what it was. Maybe some of the coaching, some of it, you know, et cetera, some you know, one-off things, and also that offensive line did kind of go even more downhill when Bryce Foster tore his ACL. Overall, though, you kind of know what you're getting with this guy. He's not the most athletic guy. He is top-heavy. He's going to have to work on some things. But overall, if you're looking for a power guy, gap scheme has that core strength can fit in right now versus NFL strength. And on to number 15 here, uh, Illinois, Zach, or Isaiah Adams. I know there is a tackle there that I did not watch. It's like Pearl or something like that. He's getting some hype right now. So I do apologize, was not able to get to his tape. But I did watch Isaiah Adams, and I was impressed. I thought he had really good tape, man. Really solid. Again, kind of like that Zach Zinter where I feel like, you know, maybe he's in like that mid-tier uh, swing guard type of player early in his career. Maybe like a John Runyon. He doesn't have like the crazy athletic traits or nothing, but he does really good with his angles. He, you know, has got some technical refinement to his game. And I think he can be a solid starter, especially on a cheap rookie contract sort of thing where he plays three, two to three years for you as a solid starter. So I kind of see him in that mold. And uh, yeah, if he can, you know, continue to continue to improve that technical refinement, like I'm not saying he can be a good offense alignment. Work hard. You can definitely do it. Uh, but yeah, I see him as a nice solid starter in the NFL, at least that potential, right? He can develop into it. On to number 16, Zach Frazier. Joe Frazier. Zach Frazier, though. West Virginia coming back. Country Rose, of course. This guy actually impressed me, man. I especially watching, you know, I was watching my uh, mill and, and I'm like, Ooh, West Virginia offensive line looking a little rough, you know, what I'm saying? especially if it's a Pittsburgh game. But then I, you know, watched Zach, Zach Frazier and I'm like, yo, this guy can play, man. He's definitely really, really good. And I, you know, he's not going to be a guy where it's, he overpowers guys or he's not the most athletic guy or anything like that. But I felt like, you know, he, he uses his hands well. He's got a really good initial punch. He brings the fight to defensive linemen. And he's also really good at, I feel like he'd be a nice zone blocker. He's good on poles too. I think he's got a good feel in that regard. So I see him as a good pass protector. I just didn't see him lose a ton. You know what I mean? And yeah, I only watched two games, but I saw him go up against some of the, you know, Kalijah Kansi and he held his own. So, yeah, I, I, I like him a lot, especially as, like I said, a round four, round five guy who could develop into a nice starter down the line. So, Zach Frazier, keep an eye out on him. Bo Limmer from Arkansas. Dude, Boza, he's a beast, man. He's a beast, like, in terms of raw, like, he is so aggressive. This guy, you, if you like aggressive offense alignment, he is your guy. Uh, he gets too aggressive, and that's why I had to, had to lower because he gets to beat way too many times. He's on the he's on the floor, you know. He's on the deck. He can't be blocking on the ground. I mean, unless you're a goalie, unless you're Dominic Kashuk. Oh no, Dominic Kashuk. What's that say? But uh, anyway, yeah. No, you ain't Dominic Kashuk, baby. This ain't hockey. But yo, Lima, you got to get up. You got to get on. You know, got to get your hands together. You know, I mean, get your feet together is what I should say. But yeah, he's really good in the run game. If he can, you know, stay more balanced. Focus on not going for the kill shot so much. He's going to rise up board, and I could see him as a round three type of guy, at least that sort of upside, because he, he brings the fight, and that's what I love, man. He's a finisher, too. He, he, will, he will look for work. I love it, man. And he's got enough athletic traits to get the job done, too. So watch out for this guy, but he's a developmental guy for right now in my eyes. Javon Cohen, formerly of Alabama, transferring over to uh, Miami, so I actually need to change the graphics on this, so pardon me. I do want to say he is uh, transferring over to the U, and will be a starter for them. 
He's a guy who actually was impressed with his lateral agility for his size. He's, you know, he's a good phone booth guy where he moves well. He can mirror guys pretty well, too. And I think he'd be a nice pass protector. He's got good enough uh, anchor and core strength and all those things. I just think he's he is limited as an athlete, right? And and also I wasn't super impressed with like his overall run blocking power. He didn't create a whole ton of movement. Maybe it's a leverage thing. Again, not always technically fine with all the you know the things. I just watched the games and I said, okay, this guy's not creating a whole ton of displacement in the run game. You know what I mean? He's not moving that guy. He's not dominating the guy in front. I understand you're playing SEC competition and all those things. It's not easy. But I felt like consistently the tape I watched, Mississippi State, LSU, Tennessee, just not moving a whole ton of guys, even if they were smaller guys. He just didn't win a lot of leverage battles. And another thing, when he was on the goal line, he always got stood up. You know what I mean? He was the one guy that got stood up consistently, it seemed like. So got to improve there. Maybe it's a lack of length thing. I don't know. But uh, gets on his toes quite a bit, too. Uh, Andrew Rim from uh, OU, Oklahoma. This is a guy who, again, very untechnically fine. He's a good athlete, though. He's got good length. He's got a lot of the tools. And I think his hands are are good too, but he is just he does not stay attached at all. Like he he gets beat way too much. And he'll that initial punch will be good, but he can't hold on. He can't grip. He's constantly getting beat after after you know that first engagement. And his body control is also a wild thing. He needs to get more you know more under control, add more core strength, all those things. So to me, he's a developmental project right now. And that's why I have him as more of a fifth, sixth round grade. But he has the tools. Like, you're talking about a guy where I will 100% taking in the fifth, sixth round, and you let him develop behind, like, a veteran center for a year or two. That's Andrew Rem. I think that's where you kind of need to put your expectations. His film is very raw, but he has the tools. On to number 20, Christian Haynes, UConn. They are just a basketball school, baby. I'm telling you, they can play some football, too. They got some players over these past couple of years. Travis Jones, I mean, Christian Haynes, maybe the next one. Hey, Christian Haynes, though. It's tough because he wins a lot of reps, you know? It's tough because I don't think he has the athletic tools. You know what I mean? I think it's just very limiting in that regard where the athleticism, the foot speed are going to be tough to combat against some of these tough guys. You know, when you're going against Jalen Carters of the world, I feel like that's going to be a big problem for him. So while he's really, I think he's got some good technical refinement. I think his hands can get a little wide, but he's got some good technical refinement. And he actually can land. Like he's good with body control. He's got good balance. But he's just so, again, the athleticism, it does worry me. So in going up against, because I've seen some guys who are really technically refined at the college level and they just don't have the athletic traits. And it's tough, man. It is really tough. But Christian Haynes, strength, all those things, he definitely can be a nice guy you take at the end of the draft and could be a big surpriser for sure uh number 21 Xavier Truss from Georgia here's another one of those guys he's got you know he's got a lot of the tools you look for for sure but and he definitely brings some hands that's for sure he'll bring the hands to the party he'll bring some punch but to me he is wild he's way too wild for me his balance is a huge issue he's on the ground way too much again unless you're Dominic Hasek you gotta be you know you gotta be on your feet and it's hard, you know, you can't be tripping people out there. And I don't know. You're going to get called for that. And also, he's just inconsistent with his overall technique. So he's a developmental guy. If he can develop this year at Georgia as their starting left guard, then sure, sure. He could be, you know, a riser for sure because he has the traits, right? I think he's got a very powerful frame, good quickness too. He's good at uh, reaching his zone blocks and sealing off. And he has all those traits to be a good zone blocker at the next level. So we'll see. Six foot seven, 320 pounds. Mm, got some, again, got some traits there. On to number 22, Christian Jones. Hook him horns. This guy actually impressed me. I, he's really got some good tape. Uh, he played left tackle there for Texas this past season. I see him moving inside the guard at the next level. But he's got a good strength profile where I think he can hang up for his NFL power. I mean, he's six foot six, 328 pounds. Solid core strength. I think his anchor is there. And he's got good body control too, especially with his size. So yeah, he's got a... And what surprised me, too, is, like, he's not bad as a run blocker in, in utilizing his movements to an adequate ability and whatnot. So he's he's got a good feel. I think it's also because he's, he's been a starter for a while, too, there for Texas. I just think he's a little limited athletically in his foot speed, his quickness. He's going to struggle over speed. So that's kind of my biggest knock on him. And there are some technical refinements that are still not there. So those are some things being a little bit, I think a little bit of an older prospect who he's going to be as, but that's eh, what it is. You know, I'm not super worried about that. 
overall, I see him as a late day three prospect, maybe even a UDFA guy. We'll see how this tape looks this year, but I see him as a developmental guard. Uh, I said that a little funny. I don't know. It's like Boston. So in Boston, this is a far away from Boston on the West Coast. Ben Coleman, a guy that I watched last year. I was really impressed with the guard. They moved him out to tackle. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's not a tackle. He does not have the foot speed. He looked totally different. You know what I mean? Like at guard, under control, good mirroring skills, good pass protector, looked great. You move him to tackle, kind of like Connor Colby in a sense. Looks terrible on an island. You move him inside the guard. All right, looks good. You know, it's tough. Now, he doesn't have the physical traits that, like, Connor Colby has. So that's, you know, where it is. This was an insufficient evaluation, too, for me because, simply put, I, I was only watched two games. And even the Oregon game was, like, only a highlights game that I was able to watch. So it's just, like, I didn't feel confident, you know, evaluating this guy and putting him super high up the list. I had to put him down the order. But I do like him, and I think he's a guy, you know, who, who knows, could develop. I, I was really impressed with his guard tape. On to our final guard, it's Clark Barrington. And Clark Barrington, he doesn't have the physical traits. He's an older prospect. He's going to be like 26 for his first snaps in the NFL. And that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. He can be a late bloomer. You know, he did his, I think probably did his mission trip or whatever. And that's fine. Hey, I respect that. All those things. But simply put, there's just too many technical refinement things. He isn't the most hulking guy. You know, he's not going to destroy you you know he's not going to create a whole ton of run blocking displacement but i do like his run blocking angles and his balance overall like he's really uh he's got good body control so again late day three round six round seven udfa he's a guy that could surprise and you could get you know a nice five plus year still out of as a starter so i don't have a problem with that just more of a later pick with some of those you know limiting things and whatnot so let me know what you think that is offensive line rankings Always fun again. Sorry for taking so long with these. Had a little hang-ups here and there, you know, some illnesses and stuff like that. It's all good, but, you know, no excuses out here. No excuses ever. You got to grind. You got to pump. You got to wrestle some. (laughs) No alligators. I am in Florida now, so we got to try. But, like I said, let me know what you think. And I hope everyone has a dope day. Keep rolling. Keep cooling. All those cool things. I'll talk to you later.